how do I put a video like this lightly? I cannot put it lightly. First, let me ask, where are the Thoreaus? Where are the Emersons? Where are the Adams? Where are the Whitmans, the Teslas? Where are the Wattses? It's hard to see now. It's hard to connect to, it's hard to find, it's hard to interface with, it's hard to capture true people. Far and few between. But it's so easy to find the least among us, the dumb among us, the ignorant among us. <sighs> What's happening to the society? The other day I was in a I was at this little gathering and uh, there's some kid there just acting dumb, acting real ridiculous. Everything about him was ridiculous and uh, you know, somebody asked him straight up, why are you acting this way? And he said, hey, I'm only 21. That's why I'm acting this way. Got me thinking, got me thinking about Augustus, Augustus Caesar, Caesar otherwise known as Julius Caesar after he took on the name of his uncle, Julius Caesar, that got murdered on the Senate floor in 44 BC. Augustus was 19 years old when he begun to assume power of the Roman Empire. In fact, more or less, he built the Roman Empire and took it to what it became. 19 years old. Can you imagine this? A 19 year old building a legion, multiple legions of armies. A 19 year old uh, marching on Rome, you know, from the ages of 19 to let's say 21, Augustus built up his campaign to take back, assume power of what his uncle begun and left him. He went on to defeat, you know, Mark Antony. He went on to defeat many enemies. This kid was 19 years old. And now I'm not saying. You know, don't take this too literal and say, okay, well, you're, you're rewarding military action of a 19-year-old? No, that's not exactly what I'm saying, but look at the age. Someone over 2,000 years ago was 19 years old. Look what the accomplishments this person created at 19 years old, 20 years old, 21 years old. Now think about the average American 19-year-old. Think about the average American 21 year old. Can you even compare that person to Augustus, to Julius Caesar, what he did at the age of 19? Nowadays, the best we could hope for for a 19 year old is that he doesn't get or she doesn't get too drunk in college or too fucked up, you know, uh, graduating from college and trying to get a job and, you know, getting involved with drugs. That's the best we could hope for a 19 year old now. The best. What does that have to say about us as a society? 2,000 years ago, a 19-year-old commanded over 25 legions of an army, was the emperor of Rome, 21-year-old, emperor of Rome. I mean, even if you look into the Bible, some of the uh, other writings outside of the Bible, rather, of Jesus, you see that when he was a young person, you know, 15, 16, Younger, he went off and studied around the world, and maybe that's not literal fact. Most likely is, if you read a lot of the literature that's out there. But either way, look at this. Somebody who was in their teens, going around the world, traveling, learning, acting like an adult. What am I getting at here? I'm getting at 
this whole thing of literal age. Someone's 19, someone's 20, someone's eight. Most people nowadays, you could be 45 years old, 50 years old, and still be quite dumb. And now, I don't know what other word to use, but dumb is the word I'm gonna use. Uh, it's just the, the best word for me to use right now in my vocabulary, dumb. It's the simplest word to use, dumb. You could be 50, year old, 50 years old and be just quite dumb, quite unaware of how the world is, quite unaware of how to be respectful, quite unaware of uh, having the responsibility to grow yourself intellectually, creatively, just in every facet of that word grow to build yourself, you could be 80 years old and still be like that. Or you could be five years old and be like, wow, you ever talk to a five year old that's, it feels like you're talking to a 30 year old. Quite honestly, I've spoken to five year olds where I was literally scared. Literally scared because I'm like, whoa, this kid's five? Five and he already is showing this level of maturity, this wit, this intellect. You know, I met the, I met this five-year-old over the summer. I couldn't believe it. That's when I realized that age really, 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 and I've always known this, but I've got to see it in practice, doesn't exist. But it does exist as well. Let's get into that. Let me light this cigar rack and we'll get into that. Age exists in a way that a leaf exists on a tree. Now that tree could be 50 years old, 2,000 years old. Think about redwoods, 3,000 years old. Now that tree will continue a cycle of losing and gaining leaves as the seasons progress, right? Well, one leaf may be older than the other. That tree produces different seasons. Leaves come and go, leaves come and go, leaves come and go, leaves come and go, but that tree's still standing there. Well, think of that as the metaphor, the grand metaphor of life. Now, please don't take what I'm saying so literal. I'm not attempting to explain what life is. That's impossible. I'm just having fun playing with words, playing with ideas, playing with concepts. You take from it what you will. So this tree is life, the life of uh, the tree of life. And we come and go, come and go, come and go. I may die tonight, but that's just like a leaf falling off of a tree, decomposing, going back into earth and creating that carbon cycle. Is that leaf really dead? No, it went back into the earth and continued the carbon cycle. This is what scientists refer to the carbon cycle. Same thing spiritually. Anything you see happening in nature obviously is holographic. Obviously, we're dealing with fractals. I'm not going too much into that, but anything that you see is happening on a macrocosm and a microcosm level which means that it's happening simultaneously with any other same exact event that's happening simultaneously on any single particular scale, large or small, same exact thing is happening. It's like a holograph. You take a holograph, you take any piece from that holograph, it's going to show the entire image. I believe that this is how nature works. This is how things just work. Everything works this way. My cigar doesn't work this way because it's not lit right now and I'm trying to smoke it. In that regard, we do have age. I could, I, maybe I'm a veteran. Maybe you're a veteran of the planet Earth. Maybe you've been here for a million years. As far as science can tell, the Earth has existed for 3.8 billion years old. Now, if you overlay that sort of science with a more of a metaphysical understanding of things, how you feel, how you feel connected to the Earth, then you could come up with my own current conclusion, which is not really conclusion, conclusion kind of denotes finality because there's no finality in this, but let's just say perhaps I've been to the earth many times, maybe for a million years, maybe for 500 years. Maybe I haven't, I don't know. Maybe you have been here for a million, 20 million, 50 million years old, 50 million. So in that sense, you have age. In the, in the respect that you continue to come back to Earth and learn about these people, learn about these people, learn about these species, learn about the biology, learn about the atmosphere, learn about the societies and the social structures. So in that respect, you could see a five-year-old and not be astonished that this five-year-old is acting or appears to be like a 50-year-old in terms of intellect, creativity, 
language, delivery of language, generation of ideas, synthesis of ideas. I mean, come on. Look at Bach, look at Beethoven, look at these people exhibiting such powerful attributes at such young ages. At the very least, it makes you wonder if you are open to metaphysics, which means are you open to everything, whether or not this person has been here before, and now they're just continuing out their work. Now, if I'm totally honest with myself, I gotta be honest, when I see a 21-year-old and this person has been stymied, this person has been thwarted, this person acts like a fool, this person acts like an idiot, this person doesn't even grow, want to grow, has no idea, no concept of growing. I feel two things primarily. I feel anger, that's just the truth. I feel a little angered, I'm just like, man, stand for something, at least a tree stands for something and you stand for nothing. You just, what you've conceded to be, a biological body suit of rotting meat that's going to expire one day. Come on. And I also feel pity. I'm just like, come on, man. I, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry that you don't know. And that also shows my misunderstanding. My misunderstanding is inherent in me conceding as well that this person I'm sorry for them or this person I'm angry at them that should not really affect me whatsoever but I could see it though this is how I'm grown because I could see it's like I'm looking at myself objectively now which I know doesn't make a lot of sense how do I look at myself objectively well this is when you begin to get beyond the subject and the object the seer and what's being seen and it just becomes seeing as Alan Watts so brilliantly talks about Maybe I'm not the only one experiencing this feeling this way. Uh, maybe I'm being too harsh, I don't know. This is just me expressing this. I just feel like, I feel sad. I look at my fellow species and I see an army of people addicted to iPhones, an army of people addicted to sending pictures of them with other people hoping to impress other people, hoping to impress other people, hoping to impress other people, this disgusting chain of social memes, social memes that lead to social barriers. I mean, come on, I mean, popularity, what? Trying to impress other people with physical objects, what? Putting people down, trying to hurt people, trying to embarrass people, trying to destroy people. What? This is happening on an astronomical scale. And I cannot help but think that shouldn't we be evolving as a species? I mean, help me out here, you know? Yes, we are evolving. Every species must evolve. Sure, we're evolving. Technologies, medicine, skyscrapers, helicopter, airplane, iPhone. Yes, we have evolved. We've advanced our minds. These minds have led to physical manifestations of technology and medicine. And, in many ways, biology. But juxtapose that with the deterioration of self-reliance. Juxtapose that with the deterioration of inherent internal power, transcendentalism. And then you see, you begin to question, are we evolving? And one must admit that we are, but at the same time, it almost seems like a simultaneous de-evolution taking place. It seems to me every other species continues to evolve 
on an upward trajectory, but yet we humans with our prefrontal cortex, our forebrain, our evolution from the reptilian brain into the forebrain, seems to show that we are evolving in many ways technologically mainly, but we are de-evolving in humanity. And what really humanity is, we're de-evolving in spirituality, we're de-evolving in compassion, we're de-evolving in creativity, we're de-evolving in the ability to connect with one another. I don't know. I. <laughs> I mean, look at who we're led by. We're led by the least among us. I mean, and we all follow the least and the least perpetuates the least. So we have a world of dumb people leading dumb people and people are so dumb enough to not even see the situation they're in. So please, this is a plea. This is a plea for the Thoreaus out there, the Emersons out there, the Einsteins out there. I know you're out there. By the very laws of nature, you guys are still out there. And I'm not talking about specifically those people, but people who were on that same frequency. You're out there, obviously. Show yourself. Come forth, because you've remained quiet all along. I know. Trust me. I want to remain quiet myself. I don't even... <laughs> You know, yes, it's great, but it's very, there's a danger in making these videos. There's a danger in writing. There's a danger in ex all this expression. There's a danger. Now I can understand why Lao Tzu did not even want to write one single word. They had to beg him to write one single word because he said the word is a lie. So obviously, there's forces out there who are just sitting back right now and just, just watching. Watching with compassion. Watching with love. Watching with equanimity and they're just saying man you know I love humans I love this species I love all but it's sad to see what's happening this de-evolution this dumbing down of our potential and I must remain quiet because even trying to fix the situation shows that the situation is irreparable things must carry out on their own. But then comes the Bodhisattva, then comes the person, then comes the Alan Watts, then comes the Emerson, then comes the Thoreau who say, okay, but I must try. I must try to ameliorate the foulness. So that's my plea. If you're out there, just step forward I'm not saying start making videos, I'm not saying do anything, any action in particular, but what I'm saying is step forward and you take that how you, however you'll take that. So step forward and help correct this, at least offset this situation of just breeding dumb with dumb, with dumb, bring forth more dumb, bring forth stupidity, bring forth people obsessed with material objects, people obsessed with popularity, people obsessed, obsessed with their faces. This is, cannot be what we're capable of. We're capable of so much more. We're capable of more than computers and technology and, and uh, genetically modified organisms. These things are great in terms of showing our evolution of the mind technologically, but step forward those who can bring forth some sort of counterbalance creators painters artists people who are going to use the brain use the free the prefrontal cortex use the mind the spirit to uplift to bring together to congeal powers of love and peace and positivity because i don't see it I see it in few people, just a few. I know many people. I only see it in a few, it shouldn't be a few, it should be a majority.